Good morning, tank friends. Well, that last game I put up with the Panzer 4 H shell was a bit of a disappointment. So let's let's put the German tanks away for a second and look at getting some extra hours in on the Churchill 7. She's slow, she's heavily armoured, and she's actually got a pretty good gun. And look, check these out. Check out the consumables. I remember to bring them. Go me. You know I said it's a good gun. It's it's not not amazing. But, you know, it's it's fine. I really want to get past this tank into the bigger, into, into the later British heavies. I know there are good tanks. I've just got to crest that hill, you know, get over the hump. I think, honestly, the gap, um, I feel like the game is fairly quick in terms of leveling stuff up and unlocking new vehicles up until about tier six and seven. Getting a, 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 Certainly for me at least, the hump has been getting from tier 6 to tier 7 vehicles. I feel like the game shifts focus a lot. As soon as you get into like tier 7 and 8 vehicles, the game suddenly gets a lot slower. takes a lot longer to get anywhere. People play a lot more cautiously as well, which is obviously something that I'm not very good at. I, I love rushing in. I know only fools rush in, but I guess that makes me a fool. Didn't think that through. I was going to have like something like witty written. No, okay, well, fair enough then. The good thing about the Churchill is it takes so long to <laughs> to to get anywhere that on the downside, once you've got somewhere, you're pretty much committed to it. But the good news is you can have you can have a cup of tea. You know, I I really appreciate that as a, a point of, of vehicle design for the. The Churchill. It's, its commitment to British values is exemplary. That road is not. Is that road safe? I think it might be. I think up until those crossroads. Oh, I take it back. fighting down the road already. <clears throat> I was going to say already. It takes so long for the tank to get there. Of course they would have set up shop. Thought that was me. It was, an, it was another Churchill. How's that Churchill fast? I guess I stopped for a bit. Stopped to have a sip of tea. <laughs> You're going to reverse right in front of me as he comes out. We didn't penetrate their armor. We didn't penetrate uh, their armor. Oh, yes, it's going to cause me problems. <clears throat> oh, oh. Thank you, repair track. Repair kit. Repairing my tracks, saving my rear end from my own stupidity. I know this is a dangerous place to be now, because people can see right down that alley. I'm really worried about that IS though. Oh, this isn't good. This isn't good. Stupid team, yeah I know. Sorry. But we've got an IS running around being afraid of a, a fecking Panzer 4 H. Don't be afraid of him mate, he can't do shit to you. Ah. Uh. So this actually leads me to one of those things that I was thinking about a while ago. And I never really... Ooh, that's the Rudy! With the dog! I really want to sort of hunt down online some episodes of the, the program that I was from. Anyway, so one of the things I was thinking about is algorithms and how you work out um, essentially a rating for World of Tanks. I know that there's the system used by XVM, um, Wargaming have their own rating system and presumably these are all based off algorithms which they're not going to really, they probably should really go into exactly how they work. But one of the things that I was thinking about in World of Tanks was the idea of um, it was the idea of things that can't actually be measured by 
an algorithm particularly well. And one of them there was what Panzer IV H was doing. We had this IS. This IS was completely was healthy, but the Panzer IV H was keeping him stood still and not doing anything. He wasn't going to. He wasn't going anywhere, and the Panzer IV H was locking him down. So to me, that's a, that's basically a peace trade. You're trading a tier five Panzer IV H, which is a really nice little tanker anyway, for a tier seven IS. The Panzer IV H can't really do anything to the IS, but it's kind of got him locked down. He doesn't want to go anywhere. And that for the Panzer IV, I feel like has value. I kind of approach a lot of games from. I used to play chess a little when I was younger, and I still enjoy playing kind of sort of, I guess, sort of traditional tabletop war games where a lot of it is working out, a lot of the sort of the strategies working out how you can effectively trade pieces, how the threat of something. Yeah, I swear to God, if I click on someone, they die. It's like the finger of God. And in World of Tanks, I feel like this is equally true, that it's not just necessarily about... Um, yeah, see? Not just necessarily about getting killed, but the idea that by being in a position, you can make the enemy team basically keep themselves out of the game. And sometimes that's bad, you don't want to trade your biggest, heaviest hitters. You don't want to have them pinned down, not able to do anything, for fear of light tanks that can't really do anything to them. We've lost a Watch out. Poor guy.